family vacation this week, and so they are gone. They had planned to go to Colorado with, with other family members, but it turned out Lance's father was having some health issues earlier this week, and so they just went to, uh, uh, to visit a family in the Chicago area. And so uh, uh, Lance's dad has had some uh, uh, tests taken. I haven't heard all the conclusions of those tests, but I uh, keep praying for uh, Lance's father and, um, and just uh, pray that Lance and Carrie would have safety. I believe they're planning to come back tomorrow. And so, um, so anyway, it's good to be with you today. I have the opportunity to share the word with you here in our service this morning. Um, but before we do that, we're going to share some announcements. And, um, and so we have a variety of things going on here at Maranatha in the coming week. Uh, one of the things is, uh, first of all, tonight we have our evening service at 6 o'clock. And um, Pat Campbell, Pat and Wendy Campbell will be here with us. Pat's a missionary to Peru. And uh, so he'll be sharing his story and giving us a little missions update this evening at 6 o'clock. We hope that you'll be able to be here tonight at 6. Um, then this week we have a variety of things going on. Uh, tomorrow night is the men's steak and corn feed. And if you haven't signed up for that, uh, please be sure to do that on the sign-up sheet there in the hallway. And um, again, we're, this is opportunity to bring friends. And maybe you're a visitor with us here today and you say, I don't know what's going on, but I, that sounds like a good idea. Um, we would love to have you join us. Uh, men's Steak and Corn Feed tomorrow night at 6. And, uh, and again, if you're planning to, to uh, attend, please sign up today. That helps us to order the correct number of steaks. If you don't sign up today, you can still come, but you might get a tube steak instead of a sirloin. So, <laughs> so anyway, uh, keep that in mind. Um, let's see. Then we have uh, Tuesday through Thursday, we have Sewing Day Camp here at the church. And so uh, Dorothy Skinner will be heading that up. And so if, uh, if you have questions about that, talk to Dorothy. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the hallway for that as well. Um, also today is the due date for the men's retreat early registrations. And so you men, if you're planning to go up to the Iowa Regular Baptist Camp later this month for the men's retreat, uh, please sign up so we can get you registered with that early registration. If it doesn't work for you to come or doesn't work for you to sign up early, you can still come at the last minute, but it just costs uh, $10 more. So we try to get the early registrations if, if at all possible. Um, choir rehearsals are coming up uh, starting on August 26th, so please note that in your bulletin. And um, uh, bridal shower for Chelsea Thompson is on August 25th, so please note that as well, you ladies. And uh, we also have a special announcement uh, from Faith Baptist Bible College. Uh, there's been a, a variety of challenges that the college has faced this summer. And uh, so Dr. Tillotson's going to give a little announcement, a little update on what's going on at Faith and how they could use your help. Thank you. They say a friend in need is a pest, and uh, <laughs> we are in desperate need. Uh, a lot of you know when we got hit with that uh, flood, it flooded nine of our buildings on our campus, uh, all of our apartments, uh, our IT building, and then two homes. Uh, we've been working really nonstop for five weeks. We're almost there, but we still have a lot to do this week. And so it's too much for us to do just on our own. We definitely need help. Uh, I was just in a class. If you marked service and helps on your list, you're the people we're looking for this week. Um, but we really need cleaning. So if you can come and clean, uh, we had to rip out a lot of our apartments four feet down. So then when you, you do drywall, mud and tape and texture, you can imagine all the dust and if you've done anything with drywall, you understand that. Uh, also, we have uh, families that had to leave. As, I mean, obviously, when that flood came, we couldn't even get to campus that night. We moved them to the girls' dorm, but then they had to, they've been out of their home uh, going into two months. If you have been out of your home that long, you know uh, what a drag that is, and uh, we want to get them back in their homes as soon as we possibly can. Uh, we have about 100 athletes that are going to be showing up uh, next Monday, a week from tomorrow. And then that week, then the freshmen come in. We're having the largest freshman class we've had in the last 11 years will be coming in on Thursday and all returning students on Saturday. Uh, so there is some pressure to get everything done. But because we're having to use the dorms, we really aren't able to house a lot of people. So we really need local people. Uh, and so we'll feed you a lunch. So if you come, uh, we're trying to start every day this week at 8 o'clock. So if you can come to Jordan Hall at 8 o'clock, uh, Kurt will be there to let you know what's available. Uh, but if you can do anything with trim, 
uh, plumbing, cleaning, cleaning is a huge job. So if you can do that, or painting. Any of those jobs, if you can come any day this week, multiple days this week, it would be a huge help. And we're just honestly in, in great need. Uh, if you know me personally, I would much rather help someone else than need help, but God has put us in this position, and uh, it's okay, and God has been providing, uh, but we need local people who can come and help us this week. So if you have any time this week uh, that you could come and work half a day, a couple hours, uh, at any point, if you can show up on our campus, uh, we could really use the help. So uh, if you have that opportunity, we'd appreciate it. I know not all of you can. A lot of you work all during the week. You say, I can't do that. Please pray for us. So. Uh, we have a lot to do in, in this week before our students start arriving. So, and we'd like to get these families back in their apartments. So God's, I, I could tell you all day long of the great things God's done through the flood. Uh, there's a lot that God has done. And we'll, we'll be doing uh, some sort of a video recap. And once that comes out, we'll, we'll get that out to everyone. But we are thankful for what God's done so far. We still have a little bit more to go. So if you can help us this week, we'd appreciate it. Thank you, Pastor. Yep, thank you. Great opportunity for us to serve and help with the ministry there. Um, as we prepare our hearts for um, our worship time together today, I just want to say that the focus of our message today is going to be on suffering, uh, sanctification through suffering. As Pastor Lance concluded his, serv uh, his sermon last Sunday, he was talking about how we could follow Christ um, through Christ's example of suffering. And I thought that would be good for me to go a little bit deeper in this area um, and so um, a lot of us have been going through various types of suffering and um, it would be good for us to focus on that today and focus on Christ through it all. Now let's go ahead and begin with our singing at this time. Good morning. Please stand and turn your blue hymnals to hymn number 481, Jesus I Am Resting, Resting, hymn number 481 in your blue hymnals and we'll stand together as we sing. You may put your hymnals down and turn your attention to the screen behind me. We'll sing together, My Soul Finds Rest, and we'll remain standing as we sing, My Soul Finds Rest.
wonderful singing. You may be seated. Let's pray. Father, you know the parts and the pieces of all of our lives here this morning, and you know how sin has really crushed everyday reality for most of us. Maybe not in massive ways, but for each of us, you see in our hearts where we struggle and the ways we suffer. And we, as a family, see each other's suffering, some very real and very noticeable. Some of us know of the very hidden sufferings that we face, and you see them all. We praise you that you sent Christ. Lord, we just sang how we rest in Christ. Resting in Jesus, finding that rest of soul in you. And God, sometimes we really, truly don't fully trust you, but you see those times and we praise you for the work of Christ, that in him your spirit works in our hearts. God, we ask, point our hearts to you and our sufferings. In the times when we don't trust you completely, we know you keep us. We praise you for that. And we ask that your spirit continue to awaken our hearts to trust you, to see those areas where we don't, and to come to you in them. So we ask for that. Thank you that we have so many people here together and that we can encourage each other to do that. And we praise you in that, that we can share not only in the sufferings of Christ, but we can share in each other's sufferings, and we praise you for that encouragement and that reality. As we look to you today, help us to remember that in Christ, sufferings are still there, but that they're all made right with you. So I pray we'd look, even in the ones that won't go away, that we'd look to eternity and look to you and look to your promises and trust and really to rest in you as we can. And we pray these things this morning. We rejoice in your love and your care and that you give us this opportunity in Christ. And we praise you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Last, you stand once more as you turn your blue hymnals to hymn number 161. What a friend we have in Jesus. We'll stand together as we sing in number 161.
may be seated. We'll call, at this time, we'll take, call the ushers to, forward to take the morning offering. This is an opportunity for um, church members and regular attenders to give uh, back to the church and to, to support some of the ministries of our church. So if you're a visitor this morning, feel free to just pass the plate on by. That'll be fine. At this time, let's go ahead and pray for the morning offering. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come and worship in your house this morning. Lord, I want to pray uh, as we take this offering that you would be honored and glorified in our giving. I pray that these funds would be used to further the gospel and to support the ministries that uh, this church um, uses and sends out. And I pray for the, your blessing over the offering this morning. I pray these things in your name. Amen. At this time, children may be dismissed for Children's Church. You know, I'll ask that you uh, turn your attention to the screen behind me once more as we sing, O oh, Father, You Are Sovereign. Instrumentalist, just in case the note didn't get passed out, it's the same tune as oh, the Church is One Foundation, hymn number 165.
Pastor Joel comes to minister to us in song. and my Redeemer, strong defender of my weary heart, my sword to fight the cruel deceiver, and my shield against his hateful darts, my song when enemies surround me, my hope when tides of sorrow rise, my joy when trials are abounding, your faithfulness, my refuge in the night. My rock and my redeemer, gracious Savior of my ruined life, my guilt and cross laid on your shoulders, in my place you suffered, bled, and you rose, the grave and death are conquered. You broke my bonds of sin and shame. You rose, the grave and death are conquered. You broke my bonds of sin and shame. My rock and my redeemer, may all my days bring glory to your name. May all my days bring glory to your Pastor Joel. The music this morning has really reminded us of the importance of keeping our focus on Christ. Um, there are sorrows, there are trials, but we are commanded to rejoice. Uh, we, are, uh, we are to keep our hope in the Lord. 
And um, that's not easy to do, is it? Um, as I think of our church family, I thought of all of the difficulties our church family is, has faced even over the past summer. Um, health problems, um, uh, you know, flooding, and just a variety of things. Uh, some of you are here today uh, with sorrows, trials that are in your lives. Maybe they're temporary things, but maybe they're things that, that uh, you're enduring until the rest to the end of your life. And um, it's very important for us to learn from God's word how we ought to, to uh, view these trials and how we should, uh, first of all, realize what, why has God allowed trials and suffering into our lives? And second of all, um, how can I bring, still bring glory to God um, in the midst of my trial and suffering? Well, as I thought of the topic of our sermon today, I was reminded of a uh, dear brother in Christ, uh, Brother Leo McCabe, who has gone through a difficult time of, of uh, suffering, and in, especially in recent months. And, um, and I know a lot of us have, have heard some about it, but um, I thought it would be really a, a good opportunity for all of us to hear from Leo um, what's been going on in his life, what God is teaching him, and how we can be praying for him better. And so Brother Leo is going to come right up front here and uh, share and, uh, and share his testimony with us. So please come, Brother. This uh, device pretty well already, isn't he? <laughs> yes, well, um, years ago I first got to know Leo pretty well as uh, we had a Wednesday night Bible study uh, back here and uh, we were going through the Stranger on the Road to Emmaus study and that was great going through God's Word together there. And uh, over the years he became more and more involved in the ministry here at the church and um, it's just been a blessing to get to know him and Chanel and Zach, their family. And, um, and so um, the, Lord's, um, the Lord's allowed Leo to go through this time of suffering. And, um, and so first of all, I'm gonna have Leo tell you a little bit about how he came to know Christ as a savior, and then we'll go from there. Thank you, yes. Well, for some of you that don't know me, my name is Leo McCabe, and uh, I've been coming here for a little over seven years, and that's when I found the Lord. And to say I found the Lord really isn't accurate. The Lord found me and called me to him. And oh, what a blessing. That has been remarkable. I have a tough time talking about this without getting somewhat emotional. So please bear with me. Sometimes that pridely manness kicks in and doesn't want to blubber, but he does. Anyway... Um, you know, prior to knowing the Lord, um, I, I really marched to the beat of my own drum. I, I did what I wanted, when I wanted, irregardless of how it affected anyone, including my own soul. But God woke me up and drawed me near to him. And I found that it was paramount that I just give my entire life to him. And I'm so glad I did. He freed me from so many of the sinful ways that I had. And those things have all been, I've been freed of every one of them. Every one of those things is gone. And I'm so glad for it. And I still praise God, just like the day that it happened. You know, our morning prayer says that there's suffering, even though we're in Christ. And I believe that's true. Because I've certainly started asking, why did this happen to me? Why am I going through all this? My health was declining. Everything was kind of going awry. And I didn't understand because when I wasn't saved, I was healthy as could be. I got saved and I started losing my eyesight. I started losing my ability to walk or to stand. Uh, I had trouble getting up out of a chair. And I couldn't figure out why. But there is suffering, so I can test that there is suffering in Christ. But it was also correct that we can hold fast to his promises. And his promises are better than gold. And I am a living testimony to that. In Philippians it says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I have found that on a personal level to be absolutely true. He's taken wonderful care of me. 
He says he knows our needs before we ever ask, but to go ahead and boldly come before him and ask. He wants us to ask. And he's not only heard our prayers, but he's answered them. I've been gone for almost 11 weeks from attending services due to my health. And, but I've been watching you guys on live stream. And Pastor Lance has always been good to give that little wave to me or make an acknowledgement that way. And I appreciate that so much. Uh, a few, uh, in early June, uh, we went on a vacation to visit my in-laws, my wife's family. And that was really nice, but the drive was probably too long. Something happened on the way home, and my leg became so sore I couldn't even touch it. So I broke down and went to the hospital. We cut our trip short. I went to the hospital early the next morning after we got home, and they looked me at the doctors, examined me, and they ran tests and ultrasounds, and then we even did an endioplasty where they tried to open the veins in my legs because it wasn't getting sufficient circulation. After that, it was unsuccessful. The endioplasty didn't work. My legs started turning black. The tissue was dead. No more blood or nourishments could feed that tissue. So I got an amputation. And you know, I just, I couldn't help but to think of Job. And the book of Job just kept ringing in my ears over and over and over. And I really experienced a lot of the same things Job did. I had people in the hospital, and I know people don't always know the right things to say. We all want to say something encouraging, and sometimes the words just don't come out right. But I remember one person in particular said, so what's the big deal? And I thought, wow, what a silly thing to say to me. Um, I didn't think an amputation was a big deal until it happened to me. <laughs> and, and it just, but I, I just had to love them and, and understand that they were trying to do the right thing. And I had so many people come to me and say, well, maybe this is God getting even for, with all the things you did wrong. And I'm here to tell you, no, never blame God. Never look at God and say, why did you do this to me? Because God did not do this to me. I don't believe that. The one thing God is good at is being good. That's the one thing he's great at is being good. You know, he allowed things to happen to Job, but he didn't do them to Job, and he didn't do them to me. But rather, I would rather give praise and know that his strength can carry me through. Everywhere, whether it's Psalms or Isaiah or Matthew or Philippians, it says everywhere to cast our burdens on him and that we should not fear or worry because he will keep us from being moved. And I believe that. He gives us the strength. So rather than to blame God, I'm going to rejoice in Jesus. I'm going to give him the praise and the glory that he so deserves because he does. Where would I be without him? Miserable. And who could I count on? Knowing that he is the true and living God, all powerful and almighty, what a fearful thing it is to fall into his hands. I never want to make him mad or disappoint him or grieve his Holy Spirit in any way. I'm going to love him with all my heart because he'll get me through. I prayed for angels, that he would send angels to put a hedge of protection around me. And miraculously, I had a group of guys from this church and a few that have went on to attend another church all come to visit me. I didn't realize it until they left, but God sent angels. And they were each of you. I have the best church family in the entire world. I'm convinced. All the calls, all the letters, the visits. And you don't know how much the visits meant. It made that time of suffering a little easier. And I believe you're all angels. All of you are saints. I can't believe how much love you gave me and support. 
and the help you gave my wife and my family. What a blessing. I never expected it. But you all really stretched out to me, and I want to love every one of you. And I want to thank every one of you. It's been suffering. There's been trials. But I know that God will see me through. One of the doctors said, you don't know how severe this is. Well, my faith is in God, so I trust that he'll get me through it one way or another. And I'm not allowed to die until God tells me so. When he calls me home, that's fine. I'm ready. And I'm willing to go. Because I believe it's got to be a better place. But in the meantime, he has a purpose for me here. And while we don't always understand what God has in store for us, I think sometimes we just need to be quiet and listen. I think we need to pay attention to what he says to us. We get so busy praying that we never stop to listen to what God has to say. After I left Yonkers Rehabilitation downtown, they sent me to a skilled facility in West Des Moines. And that was Manor Care, where I did more physical therapy. I was very disenchanted while I was there because I felt the, the things they told me just wasn't true of the facility. But I knew I was there to get stronger. And while I really didn't like being there, I felt entrapped and I felt shut in and I couldn't understand why this was happening. But I had a chance to talk to some of the residents and each of those residents have genuine concerns and worries. They have good questions. And God allowed me the opportunity to witness to them and to visit and share God's word with them. And I found out that they're very hungry for Christ. I was reading the book of Colossians while I was there at that point. And one in particular resident, I, we, we were speaking of God. And I said, well, do you think, do you think that there was uh, an opportunity here that people would want a Bible study? And she lit up. She said, absolutely. She started telling people, and the whole idea kept growing. I remember leaving her. She had to go, and I went into one of the study rooms, and I prayed. I said, God, if this is your will, if this is an opportunity that you're opening, a door that you're opening, please let me know somehow. And I started reading Colossians 4, and Paul is writing that letter, and he says to the Colossians, always pray that there would be a chance that we could give utterance. That he could share the word of God with other people. I don't find that to be coincidence. I thought, God, if this is what you want me to do, I'm going to do it. So last week, I said, arranged it, got clearance from the, from the facility, and I now get to have a Bible study there one night a week. And it started last Wednesday night. And they had such wonderful questions. We had almost 12 people. I said 11, but I didn't count myself. Uh, but there was 12 of us there. And each one of them has promised to bring somebody with them this Wednesday. If this is my chance to share the word of God with them, I found that that's the best way to keep the word of God in my own heart. What a powerful thing. What a miraculous thing it is to have God's love in your heart. Always keep him in your heart. And praise him. We pray for things. We pray for our health. We pray for our jobs. We pray for a multitude of things. But always be sure to praise him. We don't take enough chances. We don't take enough opportunities to glorify him the way we should. Without him, we have nothing. We need him. And we need to share his word with others. Isn't that the great commission anyway? To be disciples and to be disciple makers. It's a pretty simple thing. And God has given us every chance. If we're breathing five minutes from now, it's because he gave us another chance. Another opportunity to worship him and to love him. And to share him with others. Amen. What a blessing to hear 
um, how God is strengthening and helping you through this time and how the church family has, has been here to support you. Speaking of that, um, how can we pray for you and Chanel and the family in the days ahead? Well, I appreciate that. And I believe prayers do count, and I believe in prayer, and I believe in more, even more in the one who answers prayer. So if you would, being gone 11 weeks, I've missed a lot of work. So please pray for us to get caught up at work. It's taken a terrible financial toll on us. So please pray for our finances. Please pray that I'll learn to get by without this other leg. And I'm learning to cope. I'm learning to get by. I'm learning little tricks about getting from one place to another. So if you just pray that you would bless my wife and my, my son, Zach. He's here with his beautiful wife, Sh uh, Sheshwa. My mom and Bill, they've been such a big help in my life. If you would pray for their endurance to be patient with me and to help me along the way, I would sure appreciate that. Thank you so much for sharing. I appreciate that. I appreciate the courage you've shown. It's not easy to get up and share these things. But let's go ahead and have a word of prayer for our brother Leo and his family at this time. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you today. Lord, we, we thank you that you're a God who cares, a God who loves a God who is faithful at all times. And Lord, we, we thank you for the faithfulness you've shown to Leo and his family. Uh, Lord, our, our hearts go out to them and the suffering that they've faced. Uh, Lord, I pray that you'll continue to give them strength. I pray that you'll continue to supply for their needs, uh, the financial needs, just the needs for physical, uh, spiritual, emotional strength. We just pray that you'll meet those needs. And Lord, we just pray that your hand of blessing will be upon uh, Leo and Chanel and the days ahead. And that uh, even as he shared about this Bible study, Lord, we just uh, pray that this would uh, just be a, a great opportunity for him to, to share the word and the gospel and, and that you would use him in a powerful way in that. We just thank you, Lord, for this time we can spend together today in Christ's name. Well, as we prepare for our time in the Word today, please turn in your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. We're going to learn some lessons about how we can experience uh, sanctification through suffering. As I mentioned earlier, uh, we, we're going to consider these questions. Why does God allow suffering? And how can I deal with suffering in a way that honors the Lord? And I have a little outline for you today. It's in your bulletin. If you uh, want to follow along with that, you can. But, um, but 1 Peter chapter 4 is where we are here today. And uh, we'll go ahead and read this passage together, beginning in, in verse 12. First Peter 4, verse 12, it says, Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you. So we'll pause there for just a moment. Um, so it's saying here, first of all, don't think it's strange that you have trials. In other words, uh, don't be surprised when trials come your way. We live in a world that's been tainted by sin. We live in a world that, uh, that uh, we all face different types of trials, some more than others. But um, uh, don't be surprised by it. Um, James chapter 1 also talks about this. In James 1, verses 2 through 4, it says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And so, even as James said, uh, my brethren, count it all joy if you fall into various trials. No, it's not if, is it? It's when. We are all going to face some sort of trial. And even today, as you're sitting there in the pew, you're probably thinking, yes, I have a trial. Um, Sometimes that trial might be sitting right beside you. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, but, uh, but we do have trials in our lives. And um, we shouldn't be surprised by that. And uh, James goes on to say that, uh, 
we should count it all joy when we do fall into those trials. And he says that the trying of our faith work is, worketh patience. And so God uses suffering, God uses trials to help us to mature spiritually, to help us to mature spiritually. And so the first point that we have today is that we should embrace suffering because it does help us to mature spiritually. It is part of God's refining process in our lives. And um, uh, this past week, we began our in-service meetings at, at Faith Baptist Bible College, preparing us for the upcoming school year. And we had a guest speaker there, um, Dr. Les Olala, um, who, uh, who shared a, a point with us that I thought, boy, that applies directly to what we're gonna be talking about here this morning. He shared this, this uh, quote. He said, we want to change our circumstances, but God wants to change our character. We want to change our circumstances, but God wants to change our character. And isn't that so, so much the way it is? That when we're going through difficulties, we want to get away from those difficulties, but God is trying to teach us something. So we need to embrace those uh, times of suffering. I don't think we should go out looking for suffering. We shouldn't be going out looking to get hurt or have something bad happen. But um, when God does allow it to come into our lives, that we should accept it, embrace it, and be ready to learn what God wants us to learn from it. The second point I'd like to read comes from verse 13 in our text. Verse 13 in, in 1 Peter chapter 4. And here it says, But rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. So the second point is that we are to rejoice in suffering. We are to rejoice in suffering. Suffering enables us to identify with Christ who suffered for us. And he also, through suffering, gives us opportunities to build up treasures in heaven. Philippians 4, verse 4, tells us to rejoice in the Lord always. And that's a verse that uh, comes to my mind frequently. How can we rejoice always? It's that little prepositional phrase there, in the Lord. We can rejoice in the Lord when we realize that whatever God has sent into our lives, that he has it sent into our lives for a reason. And um, that if we keep our focus on the Lord, we can keep rejoicing, even when we go through various difficulties and struggles. Um, going on to the next um, point here is that um, uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, um, I'd like you to go ahead and turn there with me if you have your Bibles. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We see the Apostle Paul is speaking here of some of the trials and sufferings that he was going through. 2 Corinthians 12, beginning in verse 7, it says, and lest I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. Concerning this thing, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it might depart from me. And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in my infirmities, in reproaches, in needs, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And so here we see the testimony of the Apostle Paul, sharing of the difficulties that he had faced, but how he had realized that um, God had allowed these, these uh, struggles uh, these sufferings in his life for a reason. And one of those reasons is uh, so that he could bring glory to the Lord. And, um, and we'll talk, talk about that in just a few moments as well. But um, as you think about your life, maybe there is a certain thing that would, you would characterize as a thorn in your flesh, something that is causing you suffering, difficulties. Maybe it's something that feels like a 
uh, ball and chain around your ankle that you just feel like you can't do what you'd like to do. But God has allowed it in your life for a reason. Um, I think it's important to realize that, that God does have it there for a reason and that he wants you to use it as a stepping stone rather than a stumbling block in your life and your ministry. And um, some of you remember the story of Johnny Erickson Tata. Um, she's one that uh, those, those, those of us who are more the old timers know, some of you young people might have heard of her. She was a young lady, um, had everything going for her, and, um, and she dove into the water, I believe it was in Chesapeake Bay, and uh, struck, uh, her head struck uh, a rock or something hard, and she, she broke her neck, and, um, and because of that, she was paralyzed uh, from the neck down for the rest of her, for the rest of her life. Um, but as you look at her life and her ministry, uh, she has been able to reach thousands and thousands of people uh, because of that, quote, thorn in the flesh that God allowed to, to come into her life. And that's what God wants to do in our lives with various sufferings that we are, are encountering, that he wants to use it for his glory. And so we can rejoice in suffering because it helps us to serve God and to honor him more effectively. Um, third, we want to glorify God when suffering. We've already alluded to that some already. And um, our brother Leo brought up uh, the story from, our, from God's word, the account of uh, Job. And I'd like to go ahead and share a few verses from the book of Job, Job chapter 1. In the book of Job, um, you know how God allowed uh, Satan to attack Job, and uh, Job uh, had health difficulties, how uh, Job lost material possessions, how Job lost his children, um, just uh, how he suffered in many ways. And it's, it's interesting to see how Job responded. And in Job uh, chapter 1, verses 20 through 22, we see Job's response. After he heard all of the, the news about losing these things, he said, he, excuse me, uh, he arose, he tore his robe and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground. And what did he do? Worshipped. Worshipped. It seems like that would be so hard to do. It would be much easier, wouldn't it, in our human flesh to complain, uh, to complain against God. Why have you allowed this? That's not fair. But instead, he worshipped, and he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin, nor charge God with wrong. So we see Job's response was to worship God, to glorify God. And um, he realized that all that he had was because of God. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. And he went on to say, blessed be the name of the Lord. It give, uh, suffering gives us a special opportunity to exalt Christ, to exalt Christ. And... Um, as I was thinking of this situation, I was reminded of a story that um, we've read, we've been reading as a family. The family's been reading in our devotional time uh, the story of Harlan um, Popov. Um, some of you have probably heard of him and maybe read this book before, but it's uh, Tortured for His Faith. And uh, this man was a pastor in Bulgaria after World War II. And the communists came in and uh, accused him and many other pastors of being spies. And uh, he was placed into prison. He spent much time in a prison cell that was six feet by 15 feet, and uh, roughly maybe uh, uh, half or a third of the size of this platform, um, shared it with 15 other prisoners in that little, sp in that little cell. And, um, and they ended up marking off the cell into uh, little one-foot segments. So when they went to lie down to sleep, uh, each one would have a strip one feet wide and six feet long to lie in. And uh, can you imagine doing that? First of all, not even having a bed, but uh, lying on that uh, hard floor uh, for all of those uh, years trying to sleep with all of those other prisoners in there with you. Um, talk about going through a time of torture and suffering. 
uh, so difficult. He was tortured in various ways. One way in which he was tortured was to stand at attention for days, um, facing a wall um, that was eight inches away from him, and having to stand at attention, focusing on that, that white wall uh, for hours and hours and hours, and uh, having uh, kind of like tag team uh, uh, tormentors standing there watching him. And if he started to uh, you know, um, adjust his weight or anything, they would, they would hit him with a club and things like that. Um, just to, uh, to torture him. And his legs became bloated and, and he just became a, a mess physically. And, um, but yet, uh, he didn't give up. And he realized that the suffering that he was put, being put through was for a reason. And, uh, and what he did was he ended up becoming basically a prison pastor for the other men in that prison, leading many to Christ and helping many through difficult times. And, um, and through all of that time, uh, he kept striving to bring glory to God through that suffering. And, um, and so that's something that we need to remember. When we're going through times of suffering, uh, what's our natural tendency? You know, we have to get stitches in our foot or something like that. <laughs> we focus on our foot. We focus on me. You know, oh, it hurts so bad. Um, and um, but rather, God's saying, I've allowed that. Um, now focus on, on how can you glorify God through this. And I think it's interesting as we look at uh, these verses, um, chap, uh, verses 14 through 16. Let's go ahead and, and go back to 1 Peter chapter 4 for just a moment and read verses 14 through 16 together. <clears throat> it says, If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, as a thief, an evildoer, or as a busybody in other people's matters. Yet if anyone suffers as a Christian, as a Christian let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God in this matter. And so here we are reminded to glorify God through our suffering. I think it's interesting, it says that, um, that uh, there in verse uh, 15, it says, don't let, um, but let none of you suffer as a murderer, a thief, an evildoer, and so on. Our suffering, uh, Lord willing, will be for good or legitimate things. I think of my son, Nathan, who was down on the youth missions trip, and uh, he went through some suffering. Um, he was uh, there uh, helping them break up some tile that was... Um, um, in the way of the concrete or whatever that they needed to pour. And he broke some of that tile and a piece of the tile flew up and hit him right in the shin and uh, cut open his, his shin and he had to uh, go into the emergency room to get that fixed. And so I thought that was a good reason to get hurt. You're trying to serve the Lord, you're, you're suffering for the Lord. Uh, that's, that was good, I gave him the thumbs up. You know, if, <sighs> I have to admit, I did suggest to him before going that it would be good for him to wear a pair of jeans instead of shorts and might have uh, uh, cushioned the blow a little bit there. But, uh, but anyway, I, I overlooked that part of it. Um, and some, sometimes we suffer because of the wrong things we do. And um, for instance, um, getting a speeding ticket, coming to church. Um, that would be, uh, you know, it would probably wouldn't be good to say, oh, woe is me, Lord, um, I'm suffering for Christ because I got a speeding ticket on my way to church. Um, I don't know that that would uh, qualify for what we're talking about here. But uh, I think a legitimate question is, um, so we are suffering. Maybe we've done something wrong, something we shouldn't have done, and now we're suffering for it. How should we respond? Well, I believe that first of all, when we do something wrong, and something happens that causes us to suffer, um, God says we need to confess our sins. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So confess that sin. Maybe you've made a mistake that causes suffering. And, um, and so own up to it. Take responsibility for it. Confess it to God. But then turn around and say, Lord, how can I use this to glorify you? How can I honor you through this suffering? And I believe that God, uh, through his mercy and grace, will give you a way to, to bring honor to him through that suffering. 
And so, um, so we need to, again, seek to glorify God when suffering. And then the last point that we have here comes from verse 19. So let's go ahead and look at verse 19 in 1 Peter 4. And it says, <clears throat> Therefore, let those who suffer according to the will of God commit their souls to him in doing good as to a faithful creator. And so as we think about uh, trusting God when suffering, there are several passages that come to mind here. I'm, remember, I'm reminded of 1 Peter chapter 2. 1 Peter chapter 2 says, For even hereunto were you called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threat, threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges righteously. That's where we see um, the example of Christ, committing himself to God the Father, um, realizing that God judges righteously. We need to realize that when we are going through times of suffering, we need to trust in God. We need to trust in God's sovereign plan, even as we've sung today, that God is sovereign in all the, all the things that we're going through in our lives. Um, Hebrews chapter 12 also talks about this. Hebrews 12, verses 1 through 3, they say, Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. And so that's a reminder that we need to keep our focus on Christ, a reminder of how he suffered for us, and we also should be willing uh, to trust God and be willing to endure suffering in order to bring honor to Christ. And so we can know that God uses suffering to accomplish his sovereign and perfect plan. His sovereign and perfect plan. That's part of suffering. And um, sometimes we get glimpses of that um, in our lives, of God's sovereign plan. Some things I don't believe that we will know exactly why he allowed them into our lives until we um, meet the Lord in glory, and maybe then it won't even matter to us, and we won't even be concerned about it. But um, it's kind of interesting how God allows different things to happen. And um, years ago, um, our family was on the way home from church on a Sunday evening. And um, so our typical pathway home from church was to, to get on I-80-35 and go east. And then on the Mixmaster, we turned north on I-35 and go north. And um, we had gone about a mile or so, but there was a construction delay. And I think they were in the process of putting out the cones and they hadn't gotten everything all um, in order yet. And so there's kind of sudden stopping that we had to, uh, that had to take place as we were approaching that area of the highway. And, um, and as I s slowed down nearly to a stop, I kind of checked my rear view mirror because I thought, oh boy, hope hopefully the person behind me is watching here too. And I saw a s car behind me slowing down and so, okay, good. And so I kind of turned around, I was looking up ahead of me and then all of a sudden, bang, um, that car behind me must have turned to the other lane and then someone else who wasn't watching um, came and hit us uh, going about full speed um, and we were almost to a dead stop. And, um, and so at that point, it, it hit us so hard that uh, uh, my, wife, my wife's seat and mine uh, were both broken because our seat backs went back so hard. And, um, and uh, Nathan, or excuse me, uh, Tiffany, Tiffany and Nathan were in the seats behind us, and they, they were shook up some, but not badly. Um, Bethany and our son Nathan were in the back seat of the van, and um, the back of the van was pretty much moved up to the back seat. But fortunately, they were not um, badly injured either. But we were all a little shook up, and um, um, the accident was called in, and uh, the paramedics came, and they checked us out, and they said, we better have you go to the hospital. So. 
so they sent us all to the hospital, and um, and so it, it kind of uh, messed up our night, messed up our evening, totaled our van, and caused a variety of difficulties in our lives. I'd, I, fortunately, no one was badly hurt. It shook up a little, so there was no great physical suffering. We thank the Lord for that. But because of that, there's insurance settlements and everything like that, and and um, and so we got a. Um, we got a different van as a result of that. It was just as good, if not better, than our previous van. And then because we had the, all of the hassle, the difficulty of going to the hospital and various things, uh, we received a, a settlement for the, I guess you could say, pain and suffering that our, our family went through as a result of the, off, um, the accident. And so we thought, oh, wow, um, you know, thank you, Lord, for, so, for providing this money. And, um, and so while we were waiting for the check to arrive uh, several weeks or over a month later, um, all of a sudden um, we were having water problems at our house. And, um, and we came to find out that our well um, didn't have enough water to support um, our home and, and our neighbors around the same well. And so, um, so we ended up having to drill a new well and they thought that the well would probably need to be about 150 feet deep. Um, unfortunately, it turned out to be about 500 feet deep instead. And um, as you can imagine, <laughs> ka-ching, 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 <laughs> as that drill keeps going down, uh, you can see the dollars going away. Um, but um, basically, when the insurance check came, it came in one hand, and it went out the other hand uh, to pay for our new well. And, uh, but uh, God and his sovereign plan allowed us to go through the suffering in order for us, in order to meet that need in our lives. And uh, sometimes we see that, um, uh, that happen before our own eyes and we say, wow, <laughs> um, God, you're marvelous. Sometimes we may not see exactly why he allows it. But hopefully we can say, still say, God, you're marvelous. I can trust in you that you have this trial in my life for a reason. And so as we conclude our time today, are you trusting in God today? Um, first of all, have you trusted in God to forgive your sins? The Bible tells us, as I mentioned earlier in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Maybe you're here today and you say, I've really made a mess of my life. Um, God wouldn't forgive me. Yes, he will, if you trust him and confess your sins to him. And uh, we would love to talk with you about that today, if you're here today and you've never trusted in Christ as your personal Savior. And second of all, maybe you're here today and you know Christ is your Savior, but you're going through a, a deep time of suffering, and you're, you're overwhelmed by it. And um, even as we see from this illustration here, um, it sometimes may feel like you're in a, in a dense forest, and there's not much light. You're trying to stay on the right path, but it's hard. Um, you're overwhelmed. Um, you don't know what God's trying to do in your life. Um, we, we can say to you today, trust God. Seek to glorify God through your time of suffering. And um, also as a church family, as uh, Brother Leo mentioned here earlier, that's part of our role as a church family is to help one another through times of suffering. And if you are going through suffering, um, Go to God, and also go to your brothers and sisters in the Lord. Uh, that's why we're here, to serve and help one another through these difficult times. Um, so, um, so again, um, don't become focused on the problem, but rather focus on Christ as we go through those sufferings. Uh, may God help us to embrace the suffering, to rejoice in the suffering, to glorify God through the suffering, and to trust him through that time of suffering. Um, Aaron's going to come now and lead us in a closing hymn. Um, we're going to sing the third stanza of uh, the hymn that we sang earlier. So Aaron, please come and, and share that with us. We're going to sing the third stanza of My Soul Finds Rest. We'll stand together as we sing. You'll see the words displayed on the screen behind me.
trust that's your prayer today. And all God's people said, amen. amen. You're dismissed. Thank you.